I've gotten a ton of questions and comments recently about the misery and defeat talent for Havoc Demon Hunter. So in today's video, I'll be giving you the details on how to use it, where to use it, when to use it, and most importantly, its downfalls. Before we get to that though, make sure you like the video to help spread it to more people, drop a comment if you have any questions, and also hit the sub button if you really enjoy the content. Past 4,000 subs now, I'm pushing up every day. Appreciate you all, now enjoy the video. Sigil of Misery is a two minute cooldown talent that it comes on the class side of our tree. You're generally gonna come down here and get it anyways in Mythic Plus because it is one of our few stops. But it is a sigil that you place on the ground that activates after two seconds and causes your targets to cower in fear for 20 or 22 seconds if you take these talents. On its own, this sigil is not a DPS increase. It's a good stop to have. It can be used um, to stop packs and M plus uh, if you need that to come. Or like, I guess like a fear in certain scenarios, like on like coming to mind the ads that spawn on the last kings in Halls of Valor, you can use one to stop it for 20 seconds. Otherwise, though, this talent does not really give a DPS increase. However, what does give a DPS increase is going to be Misery and Defeat. So Misery and Defeat causes you to deal 20% increased damage to enemies for 5 seconds after a Sigil of Misery's effect on them ends. Now, the 20% is a pretty big deal, which is why I'm actually talking about this talent in the first place. Um, the 20% there can actually make or break, well, not make or break, but can make you deal a lot more damage than otherwise possible, uh, especially in you know dungeons or groups with lots of packs. So when's the best time to use this? So like I was saying, you should be using this in M+. Uh, you can use it in Raid to pad, but generally, on most boss fights, the adds you're going to use them are going to die anyways. Uh, you can use them on stuff like Aranog, uh, Center off the Little Spiders. Um, it is there as a pad option. Uh, it's never going to help you actually kill a boss, but if you want to pad and look at our numbers, um, you can use that. However, just know that it's really hollow information, hollow data. Uh, for M+, uh, basically you want to use it um, with your Essence Break window, right before you I-beam, and that includes your meta burst. So we're up at these AoE train dummies here now, and I'm using, you know, the left-right build. So I'll show you what it would be with, like, an opening burst. So we'll start off with Puzzle Box, pretend we're doing the whole thing. Visual Flame, Immolation Aura, Fell Rush Through, The Hunt, Throw a Glaive, make sure I have enough Fury, and then we drop the Sigil on the pack and immediately I-beam. So the Sigil should pop while you're I-beaming, and then you have four seconds to hit your Essence Break, your um, Rage Fire Explosion, and um, the first death sweep inside of it, and it actually ends up buffing a pretty large portion of your damage. So during that little five second window, you basically have everything going off at once. Uh, you have the last few ticks to be able to get Immolation Aura. You have the, uh, I guess Rage Fire doesn't get buffed by it, but you have some of your I Beam, uh, you have your Essence Break, you have some of your death sweep. So it's actually quite a lot that gets buffed in that little window. Um, and then that just ends up doing a lot of damage for you. So uh, I'll wait here. I'll, wait, I'll be back whenever my all my stuff's back up again, and I'll show you guys another opener just for um, you know prosperity's sake here. But uh, if you use it right before you I beam, then you're gonna end up doing a lot of damage uh, with that buff. Uh, of course, right here, um, it's not really showing the proper DPS or proper numbers or anything. Uh, details is kind of weird like that. Um, but you can see that like generally um, this DPS spread would be like 20% higher on the death sweep, the I beam, uh, most of the immolation aura. Uh, the Rage Fire will be pretty big because the Emulation Aura is buffed by Sigil of Misery. Uh, so you actually end up getting a lot of damage from that uh, initial burst. Um, I actually was, I was doing a key with it the other day and I actually ended up ripping threat. Uh, but we'll be back when everything's uh, back up and I'll show you one more time. And then we'll talk about uh, some pitfalls and stuff for this talent. So we're back again here. Everything's all back off CD. So we'll use the Puzzle Box. Sigil Flame. Emulation Aura as we hit combat. Rush in. Hunt back. Then we'll drop our Sigil. I beam flip essence break death sweep meta death sweep and then i beam again you can see everything's still kind of kind of messed up here but uh, a lot of damage was done here from a few separate abilities um i think i actually i don't know what's up with details on these dummies um but that is generally what you want to be doing uh, to get the most out of your sigil of misery now, while this talent is obviously very strong, especially in scenarios like Mythic Plus or even in Raid when there's ads that spawn that you have, you know, the ability to priority target, stuff like Diurna, Dathia, even the first boss, Aranog, that boss doesn't matter. Uh, not sure about Razageth, although I think uh, technically those little ads in P2.5 could be used. I'm not sure about uh, P1.5 because um, the big issue with this and my biggest issue with this talent is that in order to get this damage buff, the target has to be affected by the fear. And to be affected by the fear, they cannot be an elite. Uh, so a lot of scenarios, you actually don't end up getting a lot of value out of this Sigil of Misery. Uh, in a lot of packs, uh, the big scary enemies that do things are going to be elites. Um, stuff like uh, like the little tiny spiders in um, Shadow and Burial Grounds, the droplets in uh, Temple of Jade Serpent, um, the little storm elementals in uh, No Could or Ruby Life Pools. Those will all get feared. 
However, those mobs aren't the difficult mobs in the pack. Um, so all you're really doing is you're ending up padding and getting more damage on mobs that are pretty inconsequential. They're going to die pretty fast. And to do that, you're actually giving up an interrupt. You're giving up your Sigil Miser. You're giving up an AoE stop. Stuff we only have one of. And two, if you count meta, which you don't because you're using meta for damage. So we're giving up one of our only AoE stops in order to grab more damage. That really doesn't help the group time the key. It just kind of makes your damage look better overall. Um, but it's really hollow. So to show this, um, this target over here, Boulder Fist, is an elite. You can see here at bottom right corner, I want to highlight over him. He is an elite. So I'm going to target him. I'm going to put my sigil down. It's going to go off. And it's going to say immune. You can see there, it didn't go on the immune guy at all. I did not get a benefit. So a lot of packs are going to be like this, right? You're going to put your sigil down. You're going to fear the inconsequential mobs in the pack. Um, but, you know, in a lot of cases, they're not all elites. So you will end up getting this fear. Uh, and that is good, you know, if you end up stopping stuff. But there are certain scenarios where you're not actually going to get this damage benefit. Uh, you're not actually going to end up being 20% stronger. So it's it's important to keep that in mind. I do personally think that in Raid especially, this is a, a pad tool. Uh, it can be useful on Dathia platforms, I guess, um, or on like the smaller Diana ads. But realistically, um, a lot of scenarios, you're not going to get full value out of this. So do keep that in mind when you're using this talent. It is powerful. You should be using it to get the most damage out of your Havoc. But it is a bit patty, in my opinion. Uh, and you do end up losing the, on that stop in order to uh, change, exchange it for damage. Uh, but that is how you use the talent. It's not hard. Use it before your I-beam uh, so that you get all of your damage basically in that little window. Uh, you're basically doing a 20% damage amp on your damage, uh, which is very powerful. Uh, you're going to do a lot of damage with it. I just said the word damage a lot. Um, so that's you know, <laughs> kind of funny. But uh, in the end, this is strong. Uh, it's fairly simple to use as well, as long as you're putting it down. Uh, and it can lead to a significant increase in your overall. But please just remember, uh, it is a bit patty. Uh, it does not affect elites. It only works on non-elites. So just remember that when you use it, um, that it won't affect any non-elites. But with that, that is our video for today. Short and simple, to the point. I just want to get this out there. Give you guys a little bit of information on Misery and Defeat and how to best get the most out of it. So hopefully this helps you do big damn in Mythic Plus in those raid uh, environments. Uh, remember though, it might not always be the most important damage, but hey, fun numbers, big numbers are cool and everything. So, you know, is what it is. Use this, get the most out of it, go out there and be a good Havoc. So that's it for the minute of the day. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, drop a comment, drop a sub as well. Above 4,000 now, which is crazy. So thank you all for that. Should have another video out tomorrow, uh, next episode in my pugging to Keystone Hero on my Arms Warrior. Then I'll have more Havoc content the week after, probably some Vengeance stuff as well. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, whatever. Uh, and I'll catch you guys all next time. Peace. A big shout out to my YouTube channel members, Dimmy Dam and Flapjack67. Your guys' support has really helped me make these videos as good as I can. If you're looking to support me and help me make more videos and better videos, then click the link in the description below to learn more about channel membership and get a ton of sweet perks while you help me make this channel as great as it can. Thank you.